this, that no matter where it is that you're watching, you'll catch on fire and set the world around you aflame. I'm excited. I'm Pastor Jamal Harrison Bryant, and welcome to the New Birth Experience.
Online family, we haven't forgotten about you. We extend the love of Christ to you too by giving you a virtual hug. New birth family, let's give the number of grace this morning. Let's pass the peace five. Let's go. 
this room. Come on, that's, that's a little one. I need a greater shout than that because you've already had a glimpse of what your blessing looks like. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got to just drop this in the house. When I got my first job out of high school, my mother taught me to tithe, and I've been tithing ever since, and I've taken God at his word. I've stood on his promise, and I know there's never been a time, even when I thought I didn't have any money, because I am a tither, I can look in an old purse, in a drawer or something, and I can always find money. God has never let me down. He always comes through for me and my family. I don't feel good if I don't do it, because I know the benefits of it. Um, I've seen it too much. And so bottom line is, it's only a little that he asks of us. And it's not much to ask. So the greatest thing about it, it doesn't increase. <laughs> as, as, as Pastor always says, it doesn't increase. As um, taxes have increased, as other things have increased, it's, it's a great responsibility. And it's good to give because you know what comes from it. We tithe because it's our responsibility, but it also gives me a sense of peace and joy um, to know that I'm giving back just a portion of what God has done for me and continues to do for me. And he's been faithful even when I come up short. So the tithe is just a seed planted that I look forward to watching it grow. Tithing has blessed my life through many, many aspects of it on me on me being a great toddler, on how I save my money and how I expand my money for my family and for myself as well. And actually, I blessed somebody yesterday of giving him $20 for him to eat. So me being a toddler has just blessed me and blessed many people that I encounter in my life. Tithing is very, very important to God because it lets him know that you appreciate everything he's doing in your life. In order to receive a blessing, you have to give one. New birth, make some noise if you're grateful for what God has done for you. Come on, clap your hands if you're excited.
I want to invite you to just rest on your feet for just one moment. I want to challenge every person to stand. As that you'll take that neighbor by the hand. What a remarkable day this is. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we're glad in it. Whoever's hand you're holding, would you just shake that hand and tell them you're a survivor? They didn't believe it. Shake the other person's hand. Tell them you are a survivor. New birth, it is amazing for us to note that it was 400 years ago this week that the first slave ship came to this country. Nobody thought that our ancestors would make it. But there's something about the prevailing power of prayer that 400 years later, we're still here and have our right minds. I want you to give God a hand clap, a cheer of praise for our ancestors. Come on, you got to do better than that. Whoever you're standing beside, would you embrace them? Tell them you come from a strong people. You come. They didn't commit suicide. They didn't jump overboard. They didn't lose their minds. But they declared over my head, I hear music in the air. And there must be a God somewhere. Come on, clap your hands if you're grateful. You may be seated in the presence of our conquering king. Something good is getting ready to happen for you. I better say it again because you, you all didn't grab hold of it. Something good is getting ready to happen to you. Your neighbor not clapping because I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to you. Something good is getting ready to happen to you. We are uh, believing by faith that uh, God is getting ready to push us into overflow. We're getting ready to shift from just enough to more than enough. How many of you believe we serve that kind of God? to give us more than enough. I'm appreciative for uh, all of you who are present. Uh, allow me a point of personal privilege just to uh, express uh, my gratitude. Uh, glad to have uh, with us uh, Pastor Lance Johnson from Revelation Christ Church in South Carolina. That's my Morehouse brother. Stand up, Pastor Lance. Give God a cheer for him. He's a faithful son of Bishop Long. We're grateful that he's here. I'm glad uh, to have uh, uh, with us all the way from Monrovia, Liberia, West Africa, Dr. Olu Minje. Won't you please stand? I'm glad to have uh, one of my mama's closest friends and prayer partners, my godmother, Reverend Dr. Joan Louise Wharton from Hemingway Church in Baltimore. Won't you please stand? I'm glad. Glad to have uh, with us the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Today is their International Day of Prayer. Let me ask all the ladies of AKA, would you please stand? All the ladies of AKA, give God a hand clap of praise for all of them. Y'all ain't cheering good, come on. Deltas, don't let that hater spirit get on you, come on. We praying today, all is fair. Uh, we, we're grateful. Uh, today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you will share in my enthusiasm uh, when it is that Jesus was baptized, heaven opened up, and God declared, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Coming down the aisle right now are 101 candidates. Uh, Y'all ain't cheering, would you shout? Come on, y'all got to make some real noise for him.
Come on, come on, come on. I need y'all to shout for these men, for these children, for these millennials. They still coming. You may be seated. It's 101. It was supposed to be 102. I drowned one. But, <laughs> but these are the 101 that made it. Amen. And, and we're grateful for all of them. Uh, so sometimes uh, you, you have to give people their flowers while they are yet uh, amongst us. Uh, New Birth, uh, we recognize that this has long since been a globally recognized and revered ministry uh, that was watched and viewed all over the world under the leadership of our late apostle, uh, Bishop Eddie Long. We are the only church in the world who has received an Emmy Award. <laughs> Y'all some haters. And uh, of the genius uh, behind our television production is an incredible man, Jaffa Breedlove. He has served faithfully with new birth for 23 years. He is retiring today. Can we give him a big shout? Come on, come out! Big shout of thanksgiving. We're just uh, appreciative uh, for his genius and thankful uh, for his contribution of making uh, God's name great in the earth. Uh, we pray that he lives a long and a healthy life. Amen. Uh, he's uh, retiring from his position, but not retiring from new birth. Uh, amen. Come on, y'all. And that we give God glory. You may be seated. Uh, we understand uh, collectively as a church that readers are leaders. Uh, as a consequence, uh, we uh, have a book of the month every month. Our book for the month of September is Seven Declarations for an Unshakable Life. Seven Decora Declarations for an Unshakable Life. Uh, those seven declarations are uh, ensconced in one book. And I want you to please go to Call to Conquer Bookstore immediately after service is over. Uh, or you can download it on Amazon uh, and read it at your leisure. But ask that you would please, please, please uh, get a copy of this book. Uh, all of the women who love God, would you make some noise real quick? All the women. Uh, we were on our summer sabbatical. Now we are back in full force. Uh, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock is our circle with the sisters. Uh, our women's only Bible study. Uh, we want to pack and jam this sanctuary. Uh, every lady, tell the lady next to you, save my seat. Save save my seat this is where i'm gonna sit tomorrow night uh, so ask that you will please come i ask that you'll bring all of your girlfriends your co-workers your sorors please bring them to church uh, on uh, tomorrow night uh, our dear friends i am excited because today is our demonstration sunday it's our demonstration sunday and uh, I'm elated and excited uh, that today our entire church is operating in faith by tithing on today. Come on, somebody get excited if you know there's a blessing connected to your tithing. Uh, God has done some un amazing and unusual uh, things for us. We're grateful unto God. Last Sunday, we broke a record. Uh, some 40,000 people watched and worshiped online with us. Uh, would you give God some praise for all of them? Because of your tithes, I want to thank you. We now uh, have upgraded all of our equipment and all of our equipment, I hope y'all will be as excited as I am, is now in HD. Come on, give God some glory for it. 
Come on, y'all. You know we're going to ball. Amen. I want you to invite somebody to worship with us. They may have to work this morning. They may be on a college campus in a military barrack. All they have to do is go to newbirth.org, newbirth.org, and bam, they'll be right here in the center of our sanctuary. I'm telling you, you can't afford to miss a Sunday at New Birth. God is always doing something. I want to ask all of our first-time visitors, would you please stand? It's your first time hanging with us, first time rolling with us. Would you stand? First time worshipers, stand, stand. Oh, that's my family. Come on, give God some praise. My God, brother and sister are here. Danny and Simeon Wharton, thank you so very much. Do me a favor, y'all, remain standing, please. We got a rule at our church. You can't be saved and stuck up. You can't. Amen. If somebody is standing near you, would you just embrace them and tell them we're glad you're with us today. We're glad you're with us today. We're glad you're with us on today. Our Minister of Finance, Minister Jonathan Nelson is coming. Uh, we have a very special guest on today uh, and he wants to introduce uh, him to all of us on today. Uh, welcome Minister Nelson as he comes. Somebody shout out overflow. No, no, y'all said it. I said somebody shout out overflow. One more time. Somebody shout out overflow. We have been declaring that for the past few weeks and we have, we're having overflow today. We just had James Fortune this past Tuesday night and he blessed this house. This morning, we got an overflow blessing. We have a Grammy nominated, stellar award winning, NAACP winning gospel artist with us. He is my brother from another mother. He has been blessing. He has song after song after song. Nobody greater. Trouble don't last always. I need y'all to rise to your feet and let's give a new birth welcome to my brother, Minister Fashan Mitchell. Come on, everybody, let's welcome him. Come on, we can do better than that, everybody. I honor God for Pastor Jonathan Nelson. Can we give God a praise for one of the greatest churches on this side of heaven, the New Birth Church? One of the greatest pastors on this side of heaven, Pastor Jamal Bryant. So I'm honored to be here. Uh, about a week ago, I put out a new project. It's entitled Elements. And I believe some of us in here still may have a CD player. Uh, so, so to help Walmart out, I brought a few today. And I pray that you'll stop by the table. Just $10. That's less than a Popeye sandwich. So you come through and get you one. Uh, but uh, I, I'm not going to be crazy and I sing something new and sing something old. So um, I started this journey a long time ago. And I started writing songs like, you don't know my story. All the things that I've been through. You can't feel my pain. What I had to go through to get here. You'll never understand my praise. So don't try to figure it out Because my worship My worship is for real Then God dropped me off in In Atlanta, Georgia And I said, search all over Couldn't find nobody I looked high and low And I still couldn't find nobody there's nobody great, nobody great. There's nobody greater than you, yeah, yeah. Everybody in the audience just help me say, nobody, come on, search all over, everyone. I searched, couldn't, oh Lord, I look, and I, anybody believe me, say nobody, nobody great. Nobody great There's nobody greater than you Yeah, yeah Come on, lift it up, praise you Help me say, nobody greater, nobody Nobody great We believe you, God Nobody great Nobody greater than Nobody. 
just all over Good Oh Lord, I love you And I still Now lift those hands in this room and sing to the Lord, nobody No You gotta believe in it Nobody greater than and it won't always be like this the lord will perfect that concerning oh lord and sooner or later will turn in my favor say sooner or later turn him up Sooner or later, sooner, I believe it will. Help me say, sooner or later, say, sooner or later, it will turn in mind. Say it till you see today. Sooner or later, it will turn in mind. Drop me on praise him sooner or later. I know you can't see it right now. But put your faith on it and say, sooner or later, say, sooner or later. For we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord sooner or later. Only got about a minute left but you look at your neighbor and say I don't know about you but I see it already it's turning around for me oh Lord it is. it's turning around for me now just for about 30 seconds say your neighbor say excuse me neighbor but I see myself in the future and it's already turning just one second Praise Him for what you see. You may not have it yet. You may not possess it yet. But one thing you know is that God is able. So, I'm going to do a piece of this new song and I pray y'all stop by the table. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to come. But I was going around, I was singing around the world. And I, I said, I read the scripture, I haven't seen, nor have you heard, neither have it into the heart of men the things God has in store for you. And I believe, I looked at myself and said, but Sean, if you can think it, it must be too small. If you can imagine it, it must be too small. So I prayed this prayer, I said, blow my mind. <laughs> it was a prayer first, it wasn't even a song. I said, blow my mind. <laughs> Is that your prayer today? Uh, blow my mind and my grandmama said he do impossible things so I said do the impossible if that your prayer lift those hands that we say you blow my mind today. blow my mind make a declaration in here it's a prayer blow my mind blow we want to see your hand God to move and he blow my mind Blow. Woo. And just say, do the impossible, do. Do the impossible. Now I gotta skip to the end. I had a song, I say, God can do anything. That's it. And I'm about to take my seat. But look at somebody say, God can do anything. Declare it in the room, praise him. God can do anything. Say, God. God can do anything. Get something on your mind and say, God can do anything. We believe you, God. For you are a great God. God can do anything. God can do it. God can do anything. That's it. Come on. Worship with your neighbor. Say, God can do anything. Say it.
I can do anything. Now wave your hand in the atmosphere. Don't clap. Come on. Let me hear you say, God can do anything. <laughs> Hold on. Let me hear God can do anything. Make it contagious all over the building. We love you, God. God can do anything, say. God can do it. Before I six people in here, just lift those hands real high. Say, blow my mind. Blow my mind. Oh, Lord. Blow my mind. And they used to tell me he specializes in impossible things. To the impossible. Don't clap, lift your worship. Lift your sound, lift your sound. Come on, lift up that hand, open up your mouth. Come on, he can do anything. Come on, everybody, lift up your voice, cry out unto God. He can do anything. Everybody, if you believe it, would you shout out loud, he can do anything. Y'all don't believe that? Come on, I need you to get that in your spirit. Every person shout out loud, he can do anything. Come on, wave your hand if you believe it, come on. He can do anything. the Lord clap your hands if you believe it this week anything can happen did y'all hear what I just said I said this week anything can happen y'all ain't shouting good enough for me in the next seven days anything can happen your Bibles in your hand. Get your Bibles in your hand. I want to direct your attention to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 5. even at the risk of people looking at you like you're crazy. Would you just talk to yourself and shout out loud, God can do anything. study on Tuesday nights we're talking about having faith for difficult things I'm telling you you don't want to miss what God has been showing and sharing uh, with us through the Word of God Tuesday night I want you to join me right here in this sanctuary at 730 so we talk about faith for difficult things Acts chapter 5 I want us to illuminate verses 1 through 5 Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. 
Once you found it, won't you say, I got it. If you can't find it, say, Lord, help me. Would you read silently as I read aloud? Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife, Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not just lied to human beings, but you lied to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what happened. You may be seated. I want to preach today using as a subject, you ain't got to lie to me. <laughs> you ain't, <laughs> ain't got to lie to me. Would you turn to the person beside you and tell them I'm keeping it 100. I'm, <laughs> look them in the eye, tell them you ain't got to lie to me. <laughs> Nobody likes being lied to and nobody enjoys being lied on if they do they should be immediately considered mentally challenged Australian author Matthew Kelly has penned a compelling controversial work that I want to recommend to you the book is entitled, The Biggest Lie in the History of Christianity. The Biggest Lie in the History of Christianity. And in it, he maintains that the world promises of happiness are false promises. And a false promise is nothing more than a lie. Society seems to subscribe to the notion that the meaning of life is to get what you want and the more you get, the happier you will be. Astonishingly, we fall into the same cycle repeatedly. Going after something, thinking it's going to make us happy and then getting it only to find out that it's not true. We convince ourselves that if we just, just get the dress, just get the truck, just get the spouse, just get the trip, just get the house, just get the raise, if we get that, we would be happy. Only to get the person get to the place, obtain the thing, and find no happiness. There are two certain outcomes. The first is that you get the car and you become enamored for a season, but after time, your enthusiasm begins to dim. The second outcome is even more toxic. And that is that you don't ever get what you aspire toward. And you sentence yourself to imposed victimization. Imagining a better life 
if you only had it. So you end up being emotionally penalized over a lie you told yourself. If nothing else connects with you on this dreary Sunday afternoon, I want your takeaway to be that you've got to stop believing the lie in your mind. Stop believing you're not good enough. Stop believing you don't have what it takes. Stop believing everybody doesn't like you. The truth is everybody don't know you. The Huffington Post just reported that Donald Trump has just broken a despicable milestone. Since he's taken office January of 2017, he has uttered 12,000 untruths. The Washington Post, through its fact checkers, has made the claim that President Trump averages 13 lies a day. One-fifth of the statements have been related to the issue of immigration, while another third are distributed on his Twitter account. The greatest threat to the moral center of the nation is the fact that even when caught, rather than repent, Donald Trump lies about the lie. 50% of the voting populace describe him as dishonest. And if 50% feel that way, that means that that number would include some of his supporters who knowingly turn a blind eye to the blatant deceit. I can't understand the level of dysfunction it would make somebody mobilize to support somebody you know who is lying. I don't want that limited to just the president because some of us support lying family members, lying children, lying coworkers. American cartoon classic Pinocchio tells the story of an old carver who carved out a wooden puppet who he prays will come to life and become a real boy. And that he'd become a real boy if only he proves to be brave, truthful, and selfless. The wish manifests and the toy transforms into a human. And one day on his way to school, he runs into the wrong crowd and joins a show where he quickly becomes the star because he can sing and dance with no strings attached. Some of you have no idea how others on your road just pray that they can be gifted with no strings attached. That they can walk in their call and with their assignment and under the anointing of God without the fear of somebody trying to use them. Unfortunately, when the show is over, the manager who clearly is the descendant of those who work for ICE, puts this little boy Pinocchio in a cage. When the fairy comes to rescue him, Pinocchio is asked directly, why did you skip school in the first place? 
rather than telling the truth, he begins to lie. And immediately, his nose begins to grow. The fairy scorns him by announcing, you can't be a real boy if you're lying. I know it's a fairy tale. I know it's make-believe. But do you know how much I wish I could just get that fairy to follow me around so that when people start lying to me, their nose would just start to grow. What the fairy said to Pinocchio was, you can't be a real boy and be a liar. I wish I could disseminate that word to Pinocchio, to every person who's in your pew, that you can't be a real woman or be a real man if you keep lying. All the more lying over stupid stuff. Lying over stuff that don't matter. Lying over stuff we didn't even ask you for. You just volunteering the lie. In John 8, a group of church leaders were starting a rumor that Jesus was in fact Satan. So the Son of God calls them out as being liars for castigating his character. And he said, because you lying on me, you are more likely to be the devil than I am. I'm in John chapter 8 and verse 44. He decries that Lucifer is a liar, but not just a liar. He is the father of lies. The first lie ever told was to Eve in Genesis 3 when she was deceived in the Garden of Eden. For Satan to be the father of lies, hear me, for him to be the father of lies, that only means through deductive reasoning he has children. And so liars are children of the devil. To be Christian means to be Christ-like. And Jesus is the truth, the way and the life. And so if I am a Christian, I should be caught living my truth. If you claim to be connected to him, you ought to have an aversion to lies. It's a terrible thing when it ain't just people in the street, but even people in the church who will lie and do so unnecessarily. How you doing? Blessed and highly favored. <laughs> the whole time you in spiritual warfare, you trying to fight a generational curse, devil is on your back, ain't got no money in the bank. You ain't got to lie to me. <laughs> the truth of the matter is just because you're saved doesn't mean every day you're going to be happy. Come on, y'all, be honest. Doesn't mean every day I'm going to feel like shouting every day. I'm going to feel like praying every day. I'm going to be in my word. Some days I just want to sit in my car and cry. Some days I don't feel like praying. Y'all ain't going to be honest. Some days y'all going to shout on this. I don't want to turn to my neighbor. Some days I don't feel like shouting. In the early church, according to Acts chapter 4, all of the believers were of one mind and one heart. They were of one mind, of one heart. Here it is. They operated out of the ghetto principle. If I eat, we all eat. They understood the Negro spiritual, if I can help somebody. As I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or with a song, then my living is not in vain. 
Acts chapter 4 is, in fact, the paradigm of what the church is supposed to look like. In Acts chapter 4, there was no jealousy, there was no insecurity, there was no competition, and there was no judgment when somebody else was struggling, the rest of the church would step up and try to pull them up so that everybody could have a level playing field. Acts chapter 4, that's the kind of church I want to be a part of. Acts chapter 4 is the kind of church new birth is about to become. Acts chapter 4 is about to manifest in this sanctuary. I want to show it to you because y'all still ain't got the vision. Those of you watching at home, those of you who are around this sanctuary and you got your phone at your disposal, I want you to look at Acts chapter 4 and I want you to look at verse 34. It's going to blow your mind this time, Vashon. It's going to blow your mind. In Acts chapter 4, because they had a spirit of harmony and camaraderie, here it is, there was no person in the church that had a need I'm preaching and prophesying every person who was in the church had their needs met y'all are missing it nobody who was in the church was stressed out about rent about bills about car payments about student loans about insurance about utilities about car note about tuition everybody in the church was living in the glory of his sufficiency and every now and again every now and again somebody in the church would end up in a need every now and again. Somebody in the church was running behind and they made a covenant in the church that we're not going to let nobody get evicted. They made a covenant in the church. Nobody in this church is going to be living with no lights on. Nobody in the church is going to be sleeping in the car and nobody in this church is going to have children with food insecurity and nobody in this church is going to have to pick between medication and having something to eat. I'm preaching while I'm prophesying. He said he will supply all of your needs. A designer bag ain't a need. Red bottom shoes is not a need. A Gucci belt is not a need. Three bundles is not a need. But you ought to thank God I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. You ought to know that I'm shouting today not because I got all the money in the bank, but I'm shouting today because I woke up in a bed. I'm shouting today because when I turned on the shower, the water came out. I'm I'm shouting today because the car was still outside and I didn't have to park it around the corner. I'm shouting today, I hate my job, but I got one. I'm shouting. I want you to look at Acts chapter 4. It's going to mess you up. It says from time to time, somebody is running behind in the church. And if somebody is running behind in the church, look at what they did in Acts chapter 4. It's going to blow your mind. Somebody in the church would sell one of their pieces of property. Y'all went too far. Jay, this is just me and you. Y'all ain't feeling this. In other words, everybody in the church owned more than one piece of property. God, I can't hear nobody. You ought to be shouting for the real estate you ain't going to live in. God, I can't hear nobody. You ought to be praising God for your mailbox money. You ought to be giving God glory for the house you going to let your sister live in till she get herself together. God said, I'm releasing multiple. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. So everybody in the, in the church had more than one piece of property. I want to declare something over this house and I hope that y'all will get online and feel what the Holy Spirit is saying. 
that we are declaring war on believers in apartments. Y'all the slow class, I'm waiting for y'all to feel me. You are not gonna renew that lease. When it is over, y'all ain't saying nothing. Start printing out housewarming invitations. Get ready for what God is getting ready to do for you. What eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. I want to prophesy to 500 people, this is your last year paying rent. 2020, God said it's going to be property with your name on it. I don't want you to shout like you at new birth. I want you to shout like you dancing in your living room. Like God is going to give you the desires of your heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Hallelujah. Y'all got to forgive us. Because the person around you who you hear screaming, they've been praying for God to do it. God said, if you give me glory, if your praises go up, the price of the house is going down. I can't hear nobody. He said, if you give me glory, you ain't gonna need a co-signer. It's gonna be green lit by the bank. You gonna have unconventional funding and 50 ought to shout if you gonna get it with no money down. God said I'm releasing. Hey. Be seated, please. I'm Asha. Thank you, Holy God. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I feel glory coming now. I need you to grab that neighbor by the hand and tell him I don't usually shout like this. But the house I'm getting ready to receive, my great grandchildren are gonna inherit my house. I can't hear no worshiper. I tell you to give God glory like you ain't getting another eviction that there no more notices on your door. God said whatever place you put your foot on, the house is already. Hey, thank you, Holy God. Thank you, Holy God. Be seated, please. Be seated. I got to find where my church is. Be seated, please. Please be seated. I need you to elbow your neighbor because you can't even take that hand and say, neighbor, the rest of the church was shouting over the house they getting ready to buy. But my shout is for multiple properties. I'm believing God that I'ma buy up my neighborhood. I'm believing God. I'm gonna stop gentrification. I'm believing God. I'ma run every drug dealer out of my neighborhood. I'm believing God that I'm anointed from the top of my head to the soul. Be seated, I wanna say something to you. This ain't for babes in Christ. Be seated, I'm talking to new birth visitors, y'all ain't gonna get this. Be seated, I gotta tell you something. You know what I said to God? I said, God, if my church is sitting on 280 acres, then every member of the church ought to own at least 28 acres. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Do me a favor if you believe as far as your eye can see. You gonna say it's, it's, it's yours. And you believe that what God got for me, no devil in hell is gonna stop me from that. Hey. Be seated, please. 
Be seated, homeowners. I said, be seated, homeowners. I can't hear nobody in here. You ought to shout for the farm you gonna buy. You ought to be shouting right now that you gonna retire your mama. You ought to be giving God glory that not another member of your family is gonna have to be worried about where they gonna live. So they would sell a piece of property just to help somebody who was in the church, who was in the church struggling. That's what their agreement was. Nobody had to do it. That was the heart of the people. That was the spirit of the ministry. Nobody had to sign a contract. You just made a covenant with God that because God blessed me, I want to be a blessing to other people so that nobody else will have to struggle the way I struggled. Some of y'all can't shout because you ain't never had to struggle to get nothing. But those of y'all that went through some seasons where nobody would help you but God, you got to know your responsibility is to pay it forward. And in Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, there's an industrious couple who sold a piece of property and they pledged, as was the culture of their church, to give the proceeds to the church. But they sold that piece of property and they were shocked because they didn't plan on making that much of a profit. When they got the profit, they then second guessed. Lord, I, I ain't sure I need to give all that to church. <laughs> it's easier to give to God when you ain't got that much. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's, it's real faith the bigger that check got to be. Help all the person beside say, pray for me here. Pray for me. I, I don't mind giving God my last five, but it's my last 500. <laughs> my last 5,000. I made a covenant with God. God, if you ever bless me, I ain't ever gonna forget you. I said, oh yeah? For real? And then God blesses you and you get amnesia. So the brother, after selling the house, came to church on demonstration Sunday with a 235 water bottle. Came running up to the front with an envelope and laid it down at the altar, pretending like he had honored his commitment. But Peter was exercising the gift of discernment and called him out and asked him, how have you let Satan get inside you? That you're gonna lie to the Holy Spirit isn't it amazing that sometimes when demons possess people, their eyes aren't going to the back of their head, their mouths are not foaming. Sometimes you don't tell, can't tell they have a demon until it's time to give. Oh God, I can't hear nobody in here. They, they act like they are tithing, act like they're committed to the ministry, act like they got the vision. And God is saying, how are you letting Satan get in your heart? When I'm the one that's blessed you. So you let people talk you into curse. Tithe in his Old Testament. <laughs> you ain't really got to do that no more. We on the other side of the cross. And God is saying, how are you letting Satan get in your heart? Because it's not just about money. You are taking the glory. When you give it to me, you're saying, God, I owe it to you. Because if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have this. The man of God said uh, to him, the money belonged to you before you sold the property. It was yours to do with it what you wanted. The money was yours after you sold the property. 
Now you're going to walk up in this church lying. And you lying for no reason. You ain't lying to humans. You're lying to God. I'm, I'm, I'm in the word of God. I want y'all to stay right there with me. Whenever you come into God's house and you're doing all of this screaming and shouting behind Jonathan, Tiffany, and Vashon, tell my God you worthy. I, ain't nobody like you. I, I think you are the air I breathe. And then when it is that it's time for you to get your offering together, you get your air back real quick. Hallelujah. All, all of a sudden, you learn how to hold your breath underwater and you acting as if God ain't the one that gave it to you. But I, I feel like I'm in a church of people that know if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. I'm in verse number five. And after he's exposed in his lie, he falls dead right there in church. He didn't erect a false god. He didn't kill nobody. He died because he lied about his offering. Oh my God. I, I, I wonder how much of this sanctuary would be transformed into a mortuary. It done got real quiet if, 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 if we got exposed about our lying unto God. But you got to make up in your mind, God, you've been too good to me. As a matter of fact, you've been better to me than I've been to myself. Hallelujah. And I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, so help me God. The thing that I love about God is God is a God that cannot lie. That his answer is always yea and amen. There's an old bumper sticker that said God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. So do you want to know why I give to God? I give to God because I'm mindful that while we were yet sinners, he died for me. And the reason why I don't have a problem giving to God is because he always outdoes me in giving. He said, if you give it to me, it ain't going to come back the same way you gave it. But it's going to come back shaking together, running over. I can't hear nobody in here. I need to look at your neighbor and tell them God never lies. People lie. The president lies. The Republicans lie. Even the Democrats lie. But can nobody do me like Jesus? Can nobody do me like the Lord? How do I keep holding on when I can't see what he promised? Is I got to remind myself that the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but to those that endure to the end. I need you to grab that neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, my mama didn't have a whole lot of money. That's the wrong neighbor. I need you to find somebody else and tell them my grandmother never got on a plane, never had an email address, but she used to tell me that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up on wings as eagles. They'll run and not get weary. They'll walk and they shall not faint. He may not come when you want him to come, but he is an on-time God. I'm trying not to shout, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. He turned me upside down. Y'all feel like being Baptist today. Can I ask you a question? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? 
Won't he pick you up? Won't he make a way? Somebody shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Lift up that hand. Sometimes the clouds hang low. And I can barely see the road. But I want to tell you that my good days, they outweigh my bad days. And I won't complain. I'm on that hand lifted, God. I speak on behalf of every lifted hand. That we ain't going to lie to you another day of our lives. You've been too good to us. You've been embarrassingly good. And God, we thank you. We trust you for what you promised us. Even though we haven't seen it yet. We know that it's around the corner. We thank you that you made a promise that no good thing will you withhold from us. And for that, God, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you thanksgiving. Those of you this afternoon, your faith comes into agreement with my faith. Would you give God glory for what God has promised your life? I can't hear you. I say, give God glory. For what he promised your life. I want you to be seated. I'm finished. I'm just not through. I want you to be seated, please. I, uh, we made a covenant with God. Because we understand that you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. We said collectively, corporately, uniformly. We said on this day. That we would demonstrate to God the power of unity and exercise what it means to be a tithing church. I'm calling you into accountability in this hour. There's some of y'all in this room, you owe God back rent. <laughs> you nine payments behind. The amazing thing is that even when you didn't do what you were supposed to do, God has always done what he promised to do. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen a seed begging for bread. I want you to join me today. I'm calling, come on deacons, help me. On this demonstration Sunday, I'm calling for our tithers to demonstrate, to model, to exhibit what it means to trust God. Even when you're in an uncomfortable situation, even when you got your back up against the wall. It's not for everybody, ushers help me as expeditiously as you possibly can. But I'm calling, watch this, for those of you, truly, earnestly, honestly, I'm going to say, God, I'm giving you my 10% because I know you're the giver of every good and every perfect gift. And I'm believing that God is getting ready to bless you because he honors your sacrifice. Hear me very carefully. Two different waves are getting ready to come. I'm going to ask first all of our tithers, if you'll come quickly, please, all of our tithers. All of our tithers who are making a commitment, a covenant on this day, even if you're doing it online, I want you to come quickly, please. All of our tithers, I need you to move. I got an ambulance outside in case you lie at the altar. <laughs> and I gave our health ministry the Sunday off. Come on, quickly, all of our tithers, all of our tithers, you to demonstrate your faith, demonstrate your giving on this day. All of those of you who are viewing and watching online, is our demonstration Sunday. The whole church is tithing on this day. I want you to move. Come on quickly. Hallelujah. Jonathan, I, I need you all to change that sound because I'm getting depressed giving this money. <laughs> Come on, change the atmosphere. I'm, Thank you. Let's Everybody say bless, 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 bless. I 
friends that are watching online, you've never tithed a day in your life. But today you're going to do it. I want you to trust God for it. You can give them give the five text to give. Come on. in 
ushers, our ushers to serve those who are still receiving their offering, even our guests who are amongst us, those who are not uh, participating in our demonstration Sunday, ask that our ushers will please serve them uh, at this time, please. Come on, we're still living in the overflow. Hey, uh, I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. Say, say. Would you clap your hands? The deacons, if you'll bring our offering this way, please, for me, please. Every person, would you stretch your right hand to faith towards every gift and towards every seed sown, every sacrifice? Lord, I pray just as you did for the two fish and the five loaves of bread. Multiply it. I pray, dear Lord, that you will meet every need, exceed every expectation. Do what no other power can do. Now, dear Lord, I pray that you will return seed back to every sower. I pray that no person in this house will know lack or insufficiency, but they'll know you as the God of more than enough. And those of you that have that kind of faith, give God glory for it even now. Come on, y'all not excited? I said, give God glory for it. Bless the Lord. I want you to stand to your feet. Uh, those of you who are trying on Givelify, it was too many of us at the beginning. You can try it again. Please don't give up. We, we got all the kinks worked out. Uh, I want you to please uh, try it again. It's uh, now up and operable. I want to tell you this, even while you're standing uh, before the spirit of cynicism begins to take you hostage, the greatest offering you can ever give can't fit in an envelope and you can't do it by phone. The greatest gift you can ever give God is yourself. Now I got to tell you this, when God wants you, he don't want 10% of you. He wants all of you. He wants your heart. He wants your soul. He wants your mind. I want to give you an opportunity to become a part of the most generous church in the body of Christ. Come on, New Birth, you're not making noise. I want you to be a part of a ministry that doesn't want to see you struggle, but wants to see you arrive at your destiny. I want you to become a part of a church where there is no spirit of competition, but we all believe that we are one in Christ Jesus. I don't know what was said today. Maybe it was the music. Maybe it was the message. Maybe it was the spirit. Maybe it was the embrace. But something today confirmed for you that you got to join this church. You got to become a part of this ministry. If you're here today, if you're here today and you're saying, Pastor, I think new birth is where I'm supposed to be. This is an Acts chapter 4 kind of church. And I feel like this is where God has ordered my steps. If that's where you are, would you come meet me at this altar, please? Come on, quickly. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Y'all ought to clap for these homeowners coming. Y'all ought to shout for these investors coming. You ought to thank God. For those who carry the oil for their entire family, they're coming. Listen, I don't know where you're standing, where you're situated. I don't know where you're tuning in. But you don't even have to be in Atlanta to become a member of New Birth. 
We're a local church having a global impact. You want to join while you are worshiping online? Go to newbirth.org and watch God do something amazing in your life. Come on, New Birth, would you shout for those who are coming? Now listen, that was, that was the first wave. There's a whole nother wave getting ready to crash into the shore. I need y'all to help me, help me be the recruiters today. Would you talk to somebody around you, somebody who you don't know, somebody you don't recognize? I want you to ask them, are they saved? Ask them, are they a member of a church that thinks about the community? Ask them, are they a member of a church that's investing in their development? Ask them, are you a member of a church that gets excited about what God is doing in your life? Come on, give God some glory. Here they come. I want y'all to know this, listen. Come on, they coming in every aisle. Y'all don't sound like y'all happy. Shout like you would want somebody to be happy if you were coming. There's a vision of our late apostle that we would raise a church filled with strong men. This morning, I hope y'all will get excited about this morning. We baptized 17 teenage boys before we got to one girl. Oh, y'all ain't shouting good. 17 young men before we hit the first female. I need you to do me a favor, please. I want you to talk to whatever man is sitting around you. Ask him, is he saved? Ask him, does he have a church home? Let them know you ain't never going to be the man until you know the man. Come on, talk to him. Bring that brother to Christ. Come on, bring that husband down here. That son down here. Neighbor down here. Come on. Every woman in the room. Every woman in the room. Find another woman around you. Tell that woman, I like your shoes. But I'm worried about your soul. <laughs> Ask him, is your soul saved? If you're giving your life over to God, are you a part of a church that's lit like this? Come on. If you're here today, you need to give your life over to God. I need y'all to shout for this young man coming. He's the future of our people. I need y'all to get excited. I can't believe y'all ain't saying nothing. They coming all the way from the back. Come on, come on. I want you to run down here like I was giving out Popeye's chicken. Come on, quickly, quickly, wherever you are. Come on, give God some praise. I don't know what's happening in the back, but something is breaking out. Listen, every person in the room, would you look at me? Every person in the room, would you look at me? Every person in the room. Something else happening in the back. Here they come, are y'all gonna shout about it? Bless the Lord, all right? Every person in the room, repeat after me, it's a terrible thing. Say it's an awful thing. Say it's just a bad thing to do. To lie in the house of the Lord. Look at the person beside. Tell him I ain't calling you a liar. Look him in the eye. Say I just want to be sure you saved. I just want to be sure you got a church home. If they start stuttering, bring them down here. If they avoid eye contact, bring them down here. Come on, if there's somebody else, I want you to get saved today. I want you to join the church today. Come on, wherever it is that you are. I want you to come. I want you to come. I need y'all to shout for this young lady. 
If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Bless the Lord. They still coming, y'all. Stretch your right hand to faith. Repeat after me. You're in the right place at the right time. Join in the right God. And I know that's right. If you know I'm right, come on, give God some praise for me real quick. Y'all, they came as our friends, but they leaving as our family. Come on, open up your mouth and give God glory for all of them. As said, those of you all who are here, would you follow us out this way? We just want to get some information to you. New birth, make some noise if you're happy that our church is still growing. Come on, give God some glory for them. I'm appreciative for you. You may be seated. In Acts chapter 4, they had a, a mind that they don't want to see nobody struggle. They don't want to see nobody running behind. Uh, Miss Yolanda from uh, Thrive Academy, where are you? Would you come to me if you sit? Come on. Come on. Help me real quick. Thank you. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for him. Bless the Lord. So, Sister Yolanda, who's sitting in church today uh, and heard about the Spirit in Acts chapter 4, that you just want to be a blessing to other people in the church. Uh, if we've got a high schooler in the room, high schooler in the room, needs a fresh start, new beginning, uh, she wants to give you a scholarship to Thrive Academy in Stone Mountain, Georgia. And uh, So if I got the parents that live uh, in Stone Mountain and you need your child, uh, to be in a different learning experience. I need you to please see Sister Yolanda immediately after service. Would you give God a hand clap of praise? Thank you so very much. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. We're going to be best friends. Thank you. All right. Uh, so she's given a scholarship to four students today. Come on, y'all ain't shouting good. Would you give your attention to the screen for this morning's announcements and then... We going home and take a nap before power come on. Give your attention to us. We'd like to say welcome to all our new members and congratulations to all the baptism candidates. We're happy you chose New Birth. September 29th is going to be a great day of celebration for our church. Please continue to join us for our morning prayer call every Tuesday in August and September at 6 a.m. And our liquid fast is from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. You can now listen to the 235 Prayer Call Podcast. That's right. It's available right now on iTunes iTunes and Spotify. iTunes users, all you have to do is click on the podcast tab. Then in the search engine, just type in New Birth 235 Prayer Call Podcast. And for you Spotify users, it's simple. Just type in New Birth 235. You'll have access to the Tuesday 6 a.m. prayer calls. Remember to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss an episode. Ladies, tomorrow is the day. That's right, 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. It's Circle with the Sisters meeting. Join Dr. Brian for this powerful encounter you don't want to miss. It starts at 7, but get here early and invite a friend. New Birth, we want you to get a copy of September's Book of the Month from renowned author Frank Damasio. Make sure you stop by the Call to Conquer bookstore to pick up seven declarations for an unshakable life. Make sure to stop by and get your copy today. Imaginarium presents the New Birth 
Film Festival, October 16th through the 19th. The Film Fest will feature panelists, master classes, and an exclusive movie premiere. Not to mention guests, which include Carl Payne, Todd Bridges, James Fortune, and many more. We're offering a special new birth rate of $125 through September 15th. Make sure to get your tickets today. And that's all we have this time, new birth. Come on, give God some glory for all that our eyes have seen, for what our ears have heard. Amazingly, can you believe that your church is hosting the International Film Festival? Somebody give God glory. It's going to be right here on our campus. Uh, film submissions from all over the diaspora are coming here uh, from the Caribbean, from the West Indies, even from the UK, uh, from Nigeria, from South Africa. They're all coming here who are in the, the film industry. We want you to be a part of it uh, because of such a mandate and favor ain't fair. Uh, we've got a special registration just for those uh, who are members of New Birth uh, that runs up until September 15. People are coming from outside uh, are paying a different price than you are. Uh, so ask that you will please go to our information tables and take full advantage of it. Uh, would you please help me thank God for Brother Vashon Mitchell sharing his gift. Come on, come on. He's out in the lobby and uh, I want you to please get every piece of product that he has. Uh, yesterday, we had an amazing meeting, an amazing meeting with all of the entrepreneurs of our church. I, I want all of uh, the entrepreneurs who are a member of our church, would you stand? All of the entrepreneurs who are members of our church, give God some praise for all of them. We got some big things popping coming in the future and we want all of you to be a part of it. Please stay tuned for all of it. Ladies, tomorrow night at 7 p.m., meet me in the sanctuary uh, for Circle with the Sisters. Uh, and then Tuesday night, we are all here together uh, at 7.30. I'm telling y'all, we got the best Bible study of anybody, uh, anywhere. I'm telling you, uh, your mind is going to be completely uh, blown. Would you stand to your feet? Stand to your feet. If nobody told you today, I want you to know your pastor loves you. I'm praying for you every day. I want to see God get the glory out of your life. As we leave this place, but never from God's presence, repeat after me, walk with God, and he'll walk with me. Talk with God, and he'll talk with me. Listen to God, and he'll listen to me. Build for God, and he'll build for me. Love God, because he first loved me. Would you lift up that hand as high as you see yourself going? Now unto him who's absolutely able to do anything but fail. May God make you sleepless until you help somebody. May God make you restless until you help yourself. May God irritate you until you have enough sense to worship him. And may God bless you and to have enough stuff to give away henceforth now and forevermore and the blessed people of God said amen hug somebody on your way out and tell them everything is taken care of if you didn't give your offering our ushers are at every door to receive it in the receptacle